Good morning. So I wanted to talk to you real quick this morning. Let me turn this air down a little bit so you don't hear it. But I wanted to talk to you just real quick for the next couple of minutes about something that's on my heart, something that um, has been stirred up in my uh, personal study time. And I came across this saying in that uh, talk that said that our passion is often birthed out of compassion. And it really rang true with me. Um, something that one of you know my mentors taught me in ministry was, you know, Angel, search deep in your heart and look for, you know, what is that injustice that just, you know, breaks your heart and sometimes maybe even makes you angry. What's that one thing that you look at and you see happen over and over again that you, it frustrates you and it moves you and it compels you to want to help another person or to pray for those people or that person or be there or makes you wish that something would be done for them. Well, if you look in the word, Jesus was always moved over and over and over again by compassion for the people. That's, you know, why he, you know, even when, uh, it, when he saw people that needed to um, be healed and spoken the word to and fed, he was moved um, by compassion. It was uh, his desire to want to help make their lives better. You know, when we look in the book of Ruth at the uh, example there, uh, you even see Boaz, who, who you know, we know was a type and a shadow or forecast of the nature of Jesus Christ himself, our Redeemer. Um, it's a parallel if you read through that story. Um, and if you've never heard that before, then uh, it, you know, maybe Google it. But it's uh, Boaz is coming in and he's showing um, us an example of how Christ wants to rescue us and redeem us and return favor into our shower favor um, on us and and return us to a place of reconcilement with him and so Ruth has been out of her uh, element and she has chosen this hard life with her mother-in-law and she made the choice she that you know she was not gonna leave her side that whatever uh, she felt that God's will was for her to be with this woman who taught her and lived an example of God um, himself. And she said, you remember the promise? She, she looked at her and said, your people will be my people. Where you go, I go. Well, when she was in the fields for um, gleaning and she catches Boaz's eye and he he's actually says to her, uh, he says, you know, I've heard of all that you've done for your mother-in-law. So here's the thing. You hear this? Ruth's compassion for her mother-in-law, not wanting to leave her alone and begging her, don't push me away. Don't discredit me. You know, don't, don't discredit this thing that God is doing here. Let me stay on with you and help you, right? And sojourn, sojourn with you and move over to a completely different land with you. And um, let me work for you and help you in this hard time. And then Boaz comes along and he's moved by compassion for this woman, Ruth, who he has heard has been doing these things for her mother-in-law. And so he's also moved and begins to shower favor on her and help meet her needs. So I believe this is so much tied to the great commission that we all have on our lives to, you know, take notice of when you are recognizing the needs of others around you, the things that stir your heart and get you aggravated. You know, maybe it's about this health and fitness thing. It is for me. It's one of those things. You know, I am compelled and moved when I see other women in particular struggling with those same issues that I have lived with for so long and just desiring uh, to be a victory over those things. Just show me practically what and how 
to accomplish this thing so I feel in control of my body again and I feel like I can live and uh, be a blessing to others and live in the will of God as it concerns my health and be free and joyful as it concerns my body image and how I feel in my skin. So I challenge you, I wanna share that with you, but I wanna challenge you to look around you and start noticing what are the injustices? What are the things that move you and compel you and fill you with compassion for others? Because out of that, your passion for serving and um, helping others will be birthed and you will know more of God's will for your life and what to do with this, you know, this, we always say this is not just about us and it's not, it's about others. It's about using this time, the struggle that we have with our own fitness and health and how can we use it as a way to be a light and an example and a help to other people just like us. So I love you and I hope that that's a blessing to you. Have a good day.